Thanks, good afternoon. Uh, final preparations tomorrow then before the season starts. What's your assessment on how everything's gone with the pre-season tours and this week with the welcome back of a few of your players too? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty good, uh, pretty solid. Um, tour was good, you know, well organised, so kind of less disruptive than sort of last year's pre-season in terms of um, just training and the games were really good. <clears throat> you know, each game uh, was a little bit more of a challenge for us and um, conditions were tough, but players got through it really well. And as you see, we got the internationals back this week, so <clears throat> we've had a really good week of training with them back. You know, they help just with the quality and intensity of our training. And um, you know, the key thing for us is that, you know, up to date, and we've still got sort of 10 days to go, we've put in a good sort of, you know, block of work and, and, and for the most part everyone is, you know, pretty healthy, which uh, I guess from our point of view is the most important thing. Do you feel in a better place going into this season than you did in your first season last year? Well, I, I feel we're better prepared for sure because, I mean, this time last year there was still a lot of things happening, you know, a lot of sort of comings and goings and... Uh, yeah, you know, like I said, our pre-season tour was pretty disruptive, and um, yeah, we, we we probably didn't have the games we wanted to, and uh, it was a little bit of a leap into the unknown. Whereas I think, uh, as I said, it feels like we're better prepared. Certainly, the, the training sessions have you know um, gone up a notch this year compared to last year, and that's because of you know player familiarity and the coaches we have. So. You know, oh, look, I, I think everyone thinks they've, got to have, they've had a fantastic pre-season, but until we get to that first game, none of us really know. But uh, as I sit here right now, I think we're, we're well prepared. A transfer window in full flow as it is. I know you mentioned last year dealing with his announced, particularly Harry Kane, and you'd be welcoming him back uh, tomorrow. Story this morning about Tottenham in advance talks with Paul and Dominic Solanke. Is there any truth in that? Is there anything you can add from your side? Is he maybe the player... Striker, you've been looking to bring in since Harry left the club last year. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we've been looking to replace Harry. I think I said a number of times last year you can't really replace a generational player. Um, you know, th there's a reason they, they kind of stand apart, but um, yeah, fair to say that's uh, that's an area of the park, uh, you know, the front third where we really believe, uh, you know, we needed to, to sort of reinforce this year. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been working hard to, to try and uh, get the right kind of, uh, you know, players into those areas that we need uh, um, for another challenging season ahead. Obviously, you know, we're back in Europe, which means more games. And, um, you know, the one thing coming out of last year was that, you know, we, when we had disruptions in terms of injuries or suspensions, you know, we, 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 there was a real drop-off um, and we want to sort of... Um, Try and mitigate that this year by having a stronger squad to cope with everything we do. And finally, I'm sure others will maybe press a bit more on Solanke, but uh, also reports about Emerson Royale's future potentially he might be moving over to Italy. Is there, again, is there truth behind yeah. that? Is he a player, that, or is he a player in a certain area of pitch that you have plenty of cover for that you're willing to let go of? Yeah, look, I think, you know, me sort of speculating around these things is a bit like. You know, it's a bit like the treasurer or what do you call me, the exchequer. If I speculate stock markets could crash, mate, or in our world, Twitter or X or whatever, it could go to meltdown if I start uh, speculating about things. So, um, look, it's fair to say we've still got some work to do in the transfer window and hopefully um, you know, those kind of things, well, they will get resolved. Um, it's, it's a little bit difficult for me because I don't have a control over that uh, to kind of be definitive about it, but... Um, like I said, I'm hopeful that over the next sort of few days there'll be some resolution both ins and outs. Hi, hi I'm just going to ask you about Richarlison. Um, he's sort of one who, you know, you're talking a lot about adding to the attack, but he's one who's maybe had an uncertain future, but he's, he's come out and said he wants to stay at Tottenham. How do you feel about him sort of saying that and, and where his future lies with, with, with all that's going on? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure where the uncertain future comes from, not not from my behalf. I mean, when he was fit last year, he played all the time. I mean, he played well, you know, but uh, it was quite evident that when he was missing, we were, you know, we had to play Sonny in there and we had to sort of cover areas. So um, this is not about sort of, um, you know, replacing Richie or, um, you know, for us, it's about adding to our squad. We want to get stronger out of every transfer window we've had. and. You know, from my perspective, uh, <clears throat> I've seen Richie as part of what we're trying to build here. And 
obviously last year when he played, he was he was very very good for us, and um, hopefully this year we keep him healthy and you know he plays more. Um, you know, having some more quality and, and depth in that front third hopefully means we can sort of protect our players a little bit more and and, and um, you know cover their absences when they're not there. And he improved under your manager uh, under your leadership last season, but do you think that uh, he can still thrive if there's another, say, you know, big number nine like the profiles that are being discussed out there at the moment? Oh, I don't see why that would hamper. I'd like to think that you know, us being stronger as a team, I think every player who's here would want us to get better. Um, so, um, you know, I think if you if you want to be a club that challenges for for trophies, you need to have a strong squad, and that means having you know good quality players all over the park. And I was certainly, uh, <clears throat> as I said, when when there was plenty of evidence last year to show that uh, yeah, our absence has cost us a fair bit last year, and I want to try and mitigate that. Is there also a type of player in your squad that sort of is, is facing a certain future, maybe not Richie, but some of the other ones, you know, and Oliver Skips in that sort of category, maybe, and, and, and Maynard Solomon, and how are those guys dealing with it, and how do you sort of expect them to deal with it? You know, again, I think a lot of those things are, are, are kind of also in the players' hands about, you know, where, where they see themselves and, and sort of what they want out of their careers. And I've, I've always kind of had the same... Uh, <clears throat> sort of thought process around these things. You know, where they're with us, they're with us. And, and you know, that doesn't mean that uh, things things won't change. Um, and you have to embrace that or accept that as, as a manager that, uh, and as players, that things change. But while they're here, they're here. And as I said, a lot of that will be dictated by the players themselves. Um, I do think that, you know, with depending on, on the individual players, um, you know, they, they've got a career, they've got to sort of manage themselves as well, you know, about, you know, um, whether they think that this is the right place for them to keep progressing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've always respected the, the fact that uh, a lot of these decisions also come down to them. Jerry. Hi, Ed. Could you just talk through the recruitment process a little bit? Obviously, I'm guessing it's quite a collaborative effort. You look at a lot of stats as well. But how important is the, the character and the temperament and sort of player you want to bring in? Yeah, really important for me. Um, you know, I think I've I've said that on a number of occasions that you know it's um, I guess the environment we want to build and, and even the way we play is, is is fairly unique and you need I think you need to be a certain kind of personality to and character to embrace that. Um, obviously, the, the the playing qualities are, are paramount, but there's a lot of good footballers in the world. There's plenty of good footballers, and and sometimes. What differentiates them is, you know, the, the kind of personality and character they have, and I'll, I'll, I'll put great stock into that. It's not an exact science, to be fair, so it's not something, you know, that necessarily is data driven as to what kind of person they are. But, you know, I think there's a process that you can go through that, you know, sort of assures you that. I spoke about it before. Is you know, a big part for me is, you know, the motivation of why they want to come to us as opposed to anywhere else, and, uh, you know, we, we kind of try and make sure that, for the most part, we, we try and get that right. And obviously, a year in your job, what, what do you think the expectation levels are from the fans for this year and obviously from yourself and the players? I think the fans' expectations every year are that, you know, they want to see their club winning, you know, and, and being successful. I don't think, you know, that necessarily should change or diminish just because of, you know, change. Um, you know, particularly at this football club, it's, it's a big football club and it's... It's been there or thereabouts for a very long time. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, you'd like to think that our fans are optimistic about the season ahead. But for me, it still comes down to, to the basic core principles of we need to improve on last year, the areas where we kind of <laughs> fell short um, and build on the areas that we did really well. Um, because what we do know in the Premier League is that the competition doesn't stand still, you know. it's. The teams ahead of us and the teams around us or behind us, um, you know, don't stay in the same place necessarily. They improve. So for us, um, if we don't improve, we, we kind of, you know, lose ground from where we are. So we need to try and improve at a greater rate than the opposition. And that's what we want to do. You know, we want to push on from last year. And if we can improve our football, be more consistent, I think it'll, it'll put us in a decent place. Last one for me. A huge game tomorrow. Bayern Munich is, is, a, is a glamour fixture, isn't it? Harry Kane be there, you know, whatever part he'll play. But he, this time last year, he played his one and only game for you, scored a hat-trick. Did it sort of give you a glimpse of 
what a player like Kane can do wherever he is. Yeah, I think he scored more than that trick. I think I only got four or five. And people questioning whether I could fit him into my system. So <laughs> I reckon he did all right in that game. So uh, no, look, he's he's a quality player, and he proved that last year. You know, he went to the Bundesliga, broke records, he scored goals. Um, outstanding player. I mean, it, I, I you know I hope it's a good day for him tomorrow in terms of before the game, not during the game, um, because you know he's a generational player, as I said. And you know, when these players leave clubs, um, <coughs> sometimes it's it's not in a nice, neat bow where they can say goodbye and get acknowledged in the right way. So I hope, I'm sure our fans will, will definitely give him the, the, the welcome he deserves and I'm sure he'll appreciate it um, tomorrow. Um, and, um, yeah, it should be hopefully a good day for him, like I said, uh, until the whistle goes and then hopefully uh, we, we, we make it a bit more miserable for him. I'll finish this section with Rob, please. I am. Uh, just ask you for the latest on the injury front and yeah. Richard's return to the first injury. Yeah, I mean, the main two sort of, oh, actually three injury ones we had through the pre-season was uh, Richie, uh, Destiny and Fraser Foster. They missed the back end of last year and they've all sort of come back at different stages. But um, Destiny's had a good two-week block of training, so he'll play some part tomorrow, which is positive for us. Um, Richie and Fraser have got back into training this week and have had, you know, both of them sort of had a good, good block of training. Um, won't feature tomorrow, but um, you know, with with another week's training before the start of the season, uh, hopefully they'll be in a good place. But um, they were the main ones. Everyone else, as I said, has um, has had a pretty solid preseason. Those returning from the international tournament today in position to start tomorrow. They'll they'll play. Um, it's probably not ideal, but you know, again, it's our only game before our first fixture, and um, you know, they've come back in good condition. I mean. Or looked after themselves again. They've had a good week of training, so they'll get some minutes tomorrow. Uh, uh, unlikely to, to sort of start the game, but we'll try and get some minutes more in tomorrow. And then, um, you know, obviously our first league game's on a Monday night, so we get a few extra days of training with them next week. Alfie Devine's had a really good summer once mm. again. Uh, is the plan for this season for, for him to stay with the squad, or do you think another long route to come the weekend? Yeah, we're kind of. Just have a look at it really closely. I, I agree with you. I think Elfie's is a really good preseason. I think again, you know, when compare it to last year, he's definitely developed, and part of that's probably because he did you know, play senior football last year on loan. So it's kind of a lot of that will be judged by what sort of outs we have between now and, and the start of the season. I, I, I wouldn't want to sort of keep him with us unless I've really felt you know he gets some significant game time because uh, I don't want to stunt his development because I think he is a player that could make an impact here at Spurs. Uh, so. Um, but, you know, fair to say him and, and the other younger guys, you know, J.B. Donnelly, uh, Will Lankshire, um, you know, they've really made an impression, um, you know, with, with both the way they've trained and, and the way they've played games. And, uh, you know, we'll have a close look at sort of what the next steps are for them. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, well